With men's and women's basketball done for the season, we turn our attention to baseball and softball action at the Hall. On the diamond, Pirate Baseball has won five consecutive games, their most recent win coming in an 8-1 route of Fairleigh Dickinson. Now the team gets set to travel to Iona for a three-game series with their first conference series against Villanova around the corner. And in softball action, the Pirates have won four of the last six, including a massive nine-run comeback against Fairfield in their last game on Tuesday. Now they'll hit the road for their first meeting of the year with Big East juggernaut DePaul. Our panel will break down these teams' last few games and give you all the information you need to know for their upcoming matchups. I'm Bob Tui, and this is Hall Talk. Welcome back to Hall Talk. I'm joined now by my panel, Christian Gardner and Dylan Camp. Gentlemen, Pirate Baseball put together a route against Fairleigh Dickinson 8-1, to and they pretty much capped it off with a monumental seventh inning. What did you guys see? What most impressed you? Uh, really just great hitting out there. Um, and you have to talk about the pitching there. I mean, he only had two, he only gave up two hits and eight strikeouts facing 17 batters. I mean, just great play it's on the mound. Beautiful outing, absolutely. Uh, I'm going to have to go with the top five batters in the order. Uh, t top of the order, usually where you want to have that great hitting ability, and they showed it the other day. They went 7 for 20 on the game, a 350 batting average. They had six RBIs in that win. Guys like Sebastiano Santorelli and Matt Toke had great days, a great outing for that top five strength of the lineup. Five runs on five hits in the seventh inning. Uh, Dana hitting a two-run homer, Santorelli hitting a two-run triple. It doesn't hurt. But then we have to turn over to the pitching, and you alluded to it before, Christian. Uh, Cole Patton picking up his first win of the season with six absolutely bomb innings. Uh, did you expect that from a guy like him? I mean, not really. You talked about first win, but to be dealing like he was mm -hmm. on that day, just great play from him. What about yeah. you, Dylan? I mean, he's only a freshman, which is Great for Pirate Baseball in the future, first of all. For us, most exactly. importantly. <laughs> um, he only had four base runners all game, two hits and two walks. He went six scoreless innings with eight strikeouts, as you guys mentioned. Overall, that's a great start. That'll impress any scout, any coach. You'd really love to see that from the young kid. And talk about freshman presence also. You can't have this conversation without talking about Steve Grober and what he did and what he's been doing over the course of this season. Three for four against Fairleigh Dickinson, two RBIs and a run. That's called stat stuffing. I really like yes, that. And I, I wasn't sure what to expect from the younger players on this team, but it's really nice to see them kind of working out the kinks and taking a more responsive role uh, in the early goings. And I think it sets them up nicely for conference play, don't you? For I'm sure. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, with such a slow start to the season, I mean, it's starting real slow, only like 400 in wins, 8-12. Mm -hmm. and, and 12. I mean, if you can get your freshman going and get in rhythm and have probably a decent season. 100%. Now they've won five straight games. Their next series comes up against Iona. Before we dive into that, though, um, what kinks do you think the Pirates need to work out over their next series? And they have one more against Fairleigh Dickinson before they play their first in-conference series against Villanova. Off the top of your head, what comes to mind? To me, it's the inconsistency. I mean, they've gone on two losing streaks of four or more games already this season. And then they just had this, they're on a five-game win streak right now. They've only played 20 games, and that makes up, what, 13 of them? So... A lot of back and forth between winning and losing. You'd like to see a little bit more consistency. It might not necessarily be stringing together five straight wins like they are right now, but just not consecutive losses like, that, like they've had so far. If you can keep up the scoring barrage that you've had in this win streak, they have 49 combined runs in these last five games. That's insane. That's, that's, that's almost 10 points a game. Yeah, that's great. And maybe take some risk. Go for more steals against Fairleigh Dickinson. Only one person went for a steal. Um, and Jerry Hunsinger, he had a great game against NJIT, got three steals. So maybe roll the dice a little bit, see what happens. I'm glad you brought up Jerry Hunsinger because I wanted to touch on this. He and Christian Del Castillo are in the top five in batting average in the entire Big East. If they can keep that pace up, I think it sets them up really well. Again, though, consistency is the biggest issue. And there's a lot of this season left enough to play. Uh, now we're going to pivot over to Iona. The, the Gales are 5-18 and 18 right now. Uh, the starting pitching lineup has been announced. So Ricky DeVito is going to start for the Pirates against Stephen Hansen for Iona. Uh, Ricky DeVito having a phenomenal season. He's 1-0 with a 1.12 ERA. Can he keep that up? And, I mean, this is a, this is a good kind of fine-tuning game for him. You know what I mean? Just work out all the kinks before conference play. What do you expect from him? I mean, like you said, Iona's got a pretty tough record right now. Uh, I think you said 5-18. Yeah. 
And Ricky DeVito looks like he's going to be the ace of this staff. He only has three starts so far this season, but he's averaging five and a third innings per game, which is a pretty solid amount of length. You said 1.1213 ERA, and he's averaging seven strikeouts per nine innings. He's looked really, really good so far. Hopefully this will be a good tune-up game, like you mentioned. Kind of a weaker opponent, and then you've got the big guys coming up in conference. So hopefully he can get himself right, continue his amazing pitching so far this season, and just move forward with that. I'm really looking forward to seeing the rest of this team, seeing how, how can they keep this momentum. We talked about many players on this team, Christian Castillo, uh, Sebastian Santorelli. He had a great game um, in the last one. It should be fun. It's a battle of the righties against Iona. Now, who on that team for Iona do you think the Pirates need to watch out for the most? Because the, the record isn't entirely indicative no. of the firepower that they have in terms of their batting. For sure. I'm going to go with Stephen Furman for me. Mm -hmm. um, he's smart at bat. Against George Washington, he went a perfect four from four at the plate. Um, against Fairly, um, Fairfield, three at bats, and he scored twice. So if he gets going, it could be a rough day for the Hall. But, I mean, they're up for the challenge. Yeah. I think our pitching is definitely up for the challenge. I'm going to go with Sam Punzi. He's hitting, his batting average is a little bit over 300 on the season, which is very impressive. And he also has 12 RBIs. Another guy is Joe DeMeo, also hitting over 300. Um, and he kind of likes to run. You were mentioning steals for the hall. This guy likes to run a little bit. So that's just chaos on the base pass that you don't want. So it's important to keep him off so you're not worrying about that as a pitcher and as a team. With that, we're going to pivot over to softball. So they beat Fairfield 9-4 to four in extra innings, and they put together a massive comeback. Uh, through the first two innings of that game, Fairfield took a, a 2 no or a 4 nothing lead, excuse me, and then the Pirates with nine unanswered runs on top of an extremely dominant pitching performance from Reagan Camp, who anchored the back six innings of that game. What did you guys see, and were you surprised by their effort to come back in such a huge fashion? Well, Reagan Camp, as you mentioned, she's kind of their workhorse. She's pitched over a third of their innings already this season. She has 59 innings to date, which is an immense amount for any pitcher. Um, but she's got back-to-back -back solid performances, so I was very happy to see that from her. She pitched well against Nova, much shorter outing only. I think she had two or two and a third innings. Um, but now against FDU with the six, really good, strong innings. In terms of the comeback, I wasn't too surprised. This team actually had three comebacks already prior this year against North Dakota, Lehigh, and Nova throughout February and March, where they've come back from two or more runs. And once was actually twice in a game. So it's kind of been a pattern a little bit where they can get down, but they can also bring themselves back into it. So I was very happy to see that. I mean, it was just great hitting for the Hall. I mean, 16 hits and getting on base and really talk about the rallies in the fourth and eighth inning. I mean, it was just the play of Haley Otega in that fourth inning. I mean, she had two RBIs right there to get this team right back into it. And they really fed off camp. No relation, I, I believe. No, I don't think so. <laughs> but they really fed off that, that pitcher and really yeah. came back into this game being down four and in the next inning being able to get it, cut it to 4-3 and just really stepping up. And what they just kept the momentum throughout. Um, it's just the other team couldn't keep up with the same opportunities that the Hall was turning over. I mean, they, they left um, six runners on base. And after the third, they just weren't in it. And you mentioned Seton Hall with 16 hits against uh, Fairfield. The margin was what most impressed me. 16 compared to 7 for Fairfield. Like that, that is as good as you want to keep. And really, the brunt of those hits for Fairfield came when they were facing Mo Sobel, who was on the mound. Uh, Sobel got picked apart in two innings, three hits, four runs, three walks, no strikeouts. Uh, in contrast, you put in camp, she allowed four hits and three walks with five strikeouts. Right. That is absolutely huge. That's Very what you impressive. want to see. And as you mentioned, she is like a workhorse for this team. She's sitting on a 5-6 and six record with a 5-5-8. ERA. Um, so, I mean, obviously the ERA is a little high, but she does represent like a third of their innings pitched. So that's bound to happen, right? Right. With the amount of work she's putting in, like you said, a third of, like, to have one pitcher pitch a third of the time for your team is crazy high baseball or softball, no matter what you're looking at. So, yeah, you're going to expect a little bit of a higher ERA just because she's putting in so much work, a lot of strain on her arm, on her body in general, on her, just mentally. That's tough to go out there almost all the time. I think she's Pitched in 18 games so far out of 26 for the Hall. It's a ton. So, but she's doing a good job with it. She has a little bit of down times, but recently she's been very good. 
Now we're going to pivot over to the team's next series, uh, the softball team's next series against DePaul. This is their second time facing an in-conference opponent. The difference right. is DePaul sitting on a 22-9 and record. Yeah. Uh, they have been nothing short of dominant in their non-conference and even against conference opponents as well. Um, and to boot, they've won four of their last five games. So they're heading into this with a little bit of momentum, I yes. would say. How does Seton Hall counter that? And who on that team needs to be locked down first? Like, if you're looking at anybody coming to the plate, who's the biggest threat that Seton Hall needs to find an answer for? Um, I'm going to go with Jessica Cawthorn. Uh, she's batting 356, and Ari has four homers for, for uh, that team. And just if she gets going, it could be, it could be rough. But you're going to have to have your senior scores step up. Um, if you look at the last couple wins for the Hall, uh, there hasn't been a certain dominant player dominating the stat sheet. But if you can have a leader to lead, <laughs> it gets you going. Like Chris Ahead, Destiny Peck, Brianna Wallace, any, any of those seniors, mm -hmm. if they can step up. And we talked about younger players on this team. If they can follow in their footsteps, could be an upset. But really just trying to get that momentum for the rest of the season because it's a long season and you're ta taking on a pretty good team. Yeah, it's definitely a very good team, 22-9. and nine and. In their one conference uh, series so far, they've went two and one. For me, you got to look out for Gabby O'Reilly. Um, she also has a super high batting average, 333 on the year. She has 24 RBIs, and she's tied, like you said, with four home runs for, and that's the team lead for DePaul. So these two sluggers, they've got a ton of RBIs each. Cawthorn's got 28, and O'Reilly has 24. Averages well over the 330s, so that's just a lot of big presence on that team that you got to look out for. For me, the player to watch on DePaul is Morgan Greenwood. She's sitting on almost a 340 batting average, uh, 12 runs, 24 hits, and 20 RBIs. I mean, she is yeah. an extremely well-rounded player. Uh, she, she bats towards the top of the order, and she punishes ba uh, pitchers uh, night in, night out. So the fact is, uh, Seton Hall, they've really only just dipped their toes into the water in terms of conference play. How do you yeah. think they stand? Uh, I feel like they can hang with multiple teams. We'll have to see what kind of Seton Hall team it really is. Um, really around the same kind of average, um, trying to kind of break into this season. But if they can get into rhythm, it should be a good season. Yeah, I think kind of like the men's, it's been a little inconsistent so far. Um, but you definitely have some great stats to look at when you're talking about the women and just how there have been definitely some players that stick out have been producing really well. And if they can keep that going forward, it'll definitely be beneficial for this team the rest of the season. And hopefully, I think they can kind of get close to the top of that, maybe top couple teams in the Big East Conference. I would tend to agree with you. I think they have the power to hang with the best of them in the Big East. The difference is pitching. I, you, know, yeah. you can't have a performance like Mo Sobel did down the road um, and expect to be a consistent team in conference play. So I think as long as they shore up uh, the rotation, I, I, I do think that this is going to be a very promising team. And leagues ahead of what they put together last year, I really do think Absolutely. this is going to be a big turnaround for them. Well, that's going to do it for us on Hall Talk. That's all the time we have. So thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, I'm Bob Tuey for Christian Gardner and Dylan Camp. Thank you, and we'll catch you next week.